Let's learn how to add and delete different types of objects in Blender, as well as adjust their initial properties. It's kind of a meme in the Blender world that in order to start any project, you have to delete the default cube. I don't know what the cube did to deserve this, but first let's go to the object menu with the cube selected and down to delete. Click on that and our cube is no more. We can also delete objects by selecting them and then right clicking and using the last option in the context menu. Also notice that in both of these instances, the hotkey X is listed to the right side of the delete command. So we know that X is also the hotkey for delete. Let's try it out on this lamp. Let's select it with left click, hit X, and that'll bring up a pop-up confirmation just to make sure that we really do want to delete this lamp. The X hotkey is next to several other important hotkeys, and it's not one that we'd want to hit by accident. So just left click again, and now our lamp is deleted. I'll hit Control Z a couple times, and that way I can show you a couple more things about deletion. First is that you can also delete with the delete key on the keyboard. That's pretty intuitive. Just select an object and hit delete. Simple enough, there's no pop-up for that one, it just deletes it right away. I think because you're a lot less likely to hit that one by accident. You can also delete objects in the outliner. For that, go over to the outliner, select an object, either right-click and use the delete in the context menu, or you can use the X or delete hotkeys. So lots of ways to delete things in Blender. To add new objects, of course we go to the add menu. Let's do that in the 3D view header. And to bring back our cube, let's go down to mesh and cube. In the add menu, we have a bunch of different sections for the different types of objects that Blender can have. All of these types of objects have different purposes and different use cases. Besides mesh objects, which you're gonna be working with most of the time, we also have curves, which if you've ever used a vector application like Illustrator or Inkscape, you'll be pretty comfortable working with these. We also have NURB surfaces, which some of the older 3D artists might recognize, though they're pretty weak in Blender, so I wouldn't recommend using them like in other apps. Below that we have metaballs, which let's just take a second to add a metaball ball and appreciate how weird this is. If we add one of them, it's not that interesting, but if we go to add a second and bring them close together, they'll just start to gloopily meld together. And while the use case for this is admittedly limited sometimes, it's an incredibly cool way to make weird shapes. So take a second to mess with those. But then we also have text volumes grease pencil, which is the object type for 2D animation in Blender, which we'll look at in a later lesson. We have armatures and lattices for deforming our objects. We have empty objects, which are just used for organization for the most part, and images and lights and all sorts of different things. For now though, let's just stick to mesh objects. I'll go ahead and add another cube here. And you'll notice that it got added right to the center of the world. And in fact, all of our objects that we've added so far have been added right to the center. That's because new objects in Blender get added to wherever the 3D cursor is. And the 3D cursor is this little crosshairs life preserver icon that happens to be right in the center of the world at the moment. But we can move that to wherever we want. One way is to use the 3D cursor tool in the toolbar. So that's just under the selection tool. Again, it's the crosshairs with the life preserver. And if we select that tool, then we can left click anywhere in 3D space. And that's where new objects will be added. So if we go to shift A and add another cube, then that's the new spawn point. You can also change the position of the 3D cursor while you're using any of the other tools by shift right clicking. So here I'm back in the selection tool, but I can place the 3D cursor by just holding down shift and then right clicking anywhere in the scene. And you'll see that if I shift right click on an object, it'll be snapped right to the surface. Now let's say you accidentally place the 3D cursor way off into space. And it's actually really hard to do too far, but let's say it's just way off there and you wanna add something right back to the center. And let me go ahead and get rid of these two cubes here just to make this a little bit more clear. Let's say we don't even know where our 3D cursor is. And if we add a new object, then it's just, it's gone. So I'll go ahead and control Z undo that so we don't add something out in the middle of nowhere. And in order to get it back, instead of just trying to shift right click, you know, right in the center there, we can actually snap it right to the center by going to object and snap and cursor to world origin. So that's a really helpful option just to bring it back to exactly zero, zero, zero. We can also snap it to any object by selecting the object and then going to object, snap, and cursor to selected. Some of the commands in that menu are used so often that there's also a hotkey for it, which is shift S. This isn't one that I think you need to memorize right away, but it can be helpful if you find yourself using it a lot. So just to practice that once, I'll hold shift S and then in the bottom left, I'll go cursor to world origin to snap it right back to the middle. Then another option in that menu is to bring the object to the cursor. For that, I'll hold shift S and swipe up to go to selection to cursor. 
Now our cube is right back at the center. And that's really helpful if you accidentally, let's say hit G, just move it off somewhere and you wanna center it again, then you just need to place the 3D cursor right at the center, hit Shift S and go selection to cursor. Or again, you can use object and snap. Now, after using some of these operations, you might've noticed in the bottom left of the 3D viewport, we have the name of the operation listed in this little box. If we click on this, we'll expand it and see some options. This little panel is called the adjust last operation panel. And if you never see it, then you'll probably need to go to view and just turn on adjust last operation. This is especially helpful when it comes to adding new objects because we can set some of their default properties. Let's go ahead and move the 3D cursor out from the center and add another cube. Shift A, mesh and cube. And now with the adjust last operation panel expanded, we can see that it has a couple different options. We can change the size, how it's aligned, the location and the rotation. I'll skip over the UVs for now because that's a topic for another day. The important thing to know though is that as soon as you click off of the cube or select any other object or just do anything else in Blender, that panel is going to disappear and you're not going to be able to continue to adjust those options. Let's just say you've clicked off and selected some objects, but you haven't rotated or scaled anything, then you might be able to get that menu back. Just hit F9. Now in all of my clicking there, I did some other operation and it's not coming back. But often if you just do some operation like adding or moving and you click off to the side and that disappears, then you can just get it back by hitting the F9 hotkey. That'll bring it up and you can continue adjusting it from there. Some of the other default objects in Blender have a little bit more interesting settings than the cube. So let's take a look at some of those. I'll go ahead and delete these cubes here just by hitting the delete hotkey. I'll bring my cursor back to the center by going to object, snap and cursor to world origin. And then I'll hit shift A mesh, and this time we'll add a torus. This one has a lot more settings, and this adjust last operation panel is where we'd adjust the number of segments that go around the outside, the number of segments that wrap around, or how large or thick this donut shape is. Again, once you've clicked off, but before you do some other operation, you can always hit F9 and bring that back. All right, the last important thing about adding objects is that you can also do it interactively from the toolbar. If you choose this last tool here at the bottom, that's the add cube tool. And you can just left click and drag anywhere in the 3D viewport. That'll create the base, let go, and then drag up to create the height, and then left click again to confirm. What's cool about this is that it's snapped to the surface of whatever you draw on. So I can draw a cube on the side here. And since this tool has a little notch in the bottom right, then that's how you know that there are more tools inside of it. So let's left click and hold on it. And now we can see that there's also an add cone tool that works very similarly which by the way, these tools have a couple hotkeys. If you're familiar with working in any image editor, it should be familiar to just left click and drag, but then hold shift in order to constrain the proportions or hold alt to drag out from the center rather than from the corner, or you can hold both at the same time. There's also tools for adding a cylinder. A UV sphere or an icosphere. The difference between those two is that an icosphere is made of triangles, while a UV sphere is made of mostly rectangles. After you've added one of these objects though, you might be tempted to go up here in the header in the tool properties and change some of the properties like the number of subdivisions here on the icosphere. But as I slide this around, you'll notice that this isn't changing anything. That's because this is the tool properties and we're changing what we're going to do next. To adjust what we just did, we have to use the redo panel like we just talked about. So you can see that here the subdivisions is set to two, and I can change that at will, but that's going to be different than the tool properties, which determines how the tool is going to behave when I use it next time. All right, I think that's enough information about adding and deleting objects to get you in trouble. So now before you move on to the next lesson, I want you to practice this a little bit. Go ahead and use these basic shapes, either from the Shift A add menu or from the toolbar and make something super simple, whether that's a robot or a snowman or just something from your imagination. It can even be complete nonsense if you want, but just get comfortable with adding, deleting, and placing the 3D cursor. I know you don't watch these videos to get homework, but I promise you that getting these things into your muscle memory early on will be very helpful for what we're going to do next.